Hi, welcome once again on Europedia education platform where you are getting the detailed informations about how to prepare for any kind of interviews, right? And this particular video is related to the actual question asked in BARC uh, and this question is from fluid mechanics. You know BARC as you know is a one of the best interviews experience you can ever have and BARC interview is very long. You must have heard students say that sir, a ghanta, dead ghanta mera interview chala. So what they keep on asking in such a long interview, what do they ask? You know, they, they start with very basic thing. They start with very basic things. When you tell your favorite subjects to them, they start with basic questions and they keep on increasing the depth of the question. And long time is there because they give you sufficient time to think. And they are not interested always in the answers they are interested in the approach which you take. So whatever approach you will follow to reach the conclusion that is what they are interested in. And because we keep on going for so many mock interviews with the students for BARC, uh, I strongly believe that uh, yes, long interviews may you get to know whether you can be scientist material or not. So when we ask the question to the students, some of the students just want to vomit out the answer. As the question is asked, they just want to vomit out the answer and if they don't know the question or they don't know the answer, they say sorry immediately and then stop it. Stop even putting effort. Scientist material is the person who <clears throat> even if he does not know the concept or question, he will take some time and he will try to struggle with the scientific concepts, mathematics, physics concepts and try to give something, some approach to you that is where the scientist material is different from others and that is the approach I think they want to check it. Now in today's video I will share with you one such question which was asked in BARC maybe it will be helpful to you. I will tell you narrate you the entire thing how it all happened and how it all went as narrated to me by the student. So the moment you go there they ask you your favorite subjects then you say my favorite subjects is fluid mechanics. Okay. So the first question popped up was, do you know the kind of, you know, uh, you, you know any, you have some idea about uh, bulk modulus? Yes, yes sir, I know what is bulk modulus. Can you define what is the bulk modulus? Yes, the students say, I know what is bulk modulus and then he decide, he says what is bulk modulus. What is bulk modulus? So suppose I write it, they will ask you to go on the board and write bulk modulus. This is the expression of bulk modulus. Now let me tell you, many students will make the mistake in not putting the negative mark here. Many students will not put negative mark and that is what they will observe. So bulk modulus may this negative mark comes and this delta P is the excessive pressure this is the excessive pressure that means the increase in pressure something like that final pressure minus initial pressure so suppose the initial pressure was p1 now the pressure has increased to p2 final pressure now this sigma basically is compressive stress because we have already discussed how pressure and stress compressive stress are related or stress is related. So I can compare the pressure with the compressive stress. So suppose I give you an element uh, subjected to some kind of if I say okay the body is subjected to pressure. So that pressure can also be compared with the compressive stress. The body may be subjected to compressive stress also or as we say it can be the pressure. So the body is subjected to pressure or compressive stress. So that is what is the correlation. <clears throat> now what is delta V by V? So delta V is increase in volume, initial volume was V1 and then this delta V by V is nothing but it is called volumetric strain. This is called volumetric strain and this is written as V2 minus V1 by V1. Initial volume was V1, final volume is V2. Now couple of things here he will ask you is why this is called bulk 
what is the reason this is called bulk bulk actually is a quantity now it is called bulk because you are dealing here with three dimensional things and fluid has you know a quantity fluid is a quantity you cannot say i am considering a fluid in 2d it is not like that so i am considering the quantity here i am talking about the volume quantity and you know volume is a three dimensional concept it is not a 1d or 2d concept area is a 2d concept length is 1d concept but volume is a 3d concept and when we talk about 3d we talk about quantity and hence it is called bulk maybe something like that you can say secondly say why is this negative because k is normally a positive term k is a positive term so why you say uh, why you have negative term here why because sir if i increase the pressure if i increase the pressure on a body its volume decreases that is what we know so if i compress something from all the sides its volume is going to shrink or decrease so if delta p is positive delta v is negative and one of these two terms is negative and to make this entire thing k positive i put it negative sign so those those things are already known to you something uh, he can ask you from there next question comes is okay can you write it in terms of density and now if you want to write it in terms of density you know mass per unit volume is density that gives me mass is equal to volume into density i can write like that also now take the natural log on both sides natural log of mass is natural log of v into rho and as you know i can write it as natural log of v plus natural log of density so this gives me an equation between mass volume and density when you differentiate it what you get is dm over m is equal to dv over v plus d rho by rho now suppose i ask you a question that when i apply the pressure on body or a body is subjected to compressive stress from all the direction then what remains constant density or volume or mass what do you think remains constant answer is mass remains constant that means when i subject a body to compressive stress or pressure mass is not going to change and if mass is not going to change dm over m is zero and that gives me change in density over original density as dv over v so that means now we have got an equation in terms of d rho we just now said it is minus delta p over delta v over v and now i can write it as delta p over delta rho by rho i can write it like this also so bulk modulus can be written like this now you should always know that uh, bulk modulus can also be compared with is proportional to compressibility is com measure of compressibility in fact it is reverse of compressibility if the fluid is incompressible if a fluid is incompressible then change in density is almost zero change in density is zero and hence k approaches infinity k approaches infinity so if compressibility is zero if the fluid is incompressible if the fluid is incompressible then compressibility is zero you understand that and if compressibility is zero k is infinite so understand that if fluid is incompressible then compressibility is zero you understand compressibility zero means fluid is incompressible and then k approaches infinity so it is a infinity means very high value of k that is what we understand here so far this everybody knows now he says now the question real question comes he says how if i give you a lake let us say there is a water in the lake let's say this is the surface of the lake which we have made and let's say i go this pressure is p atmosphere suppose i go to a depth z meter below water this is point 2 this is state 1 suppose i go to the depth z downward as you know as i go downward what happens is the hydrostatic law is there pressure keeps on increasing that everybody knows right 
as you go to the depth dp by dz is nothing but rho into g into z you know that particular thing so <clears throat> dp by dz sorry is equal to rho into g specific volume so there is a change in pressure with the specific weight rho into g is a specific weight so the question now he asks is how the density of the liquid changes with the depth that is what you have to answer how the density how density of liquid density of water changes with depth that is a question you say sir the density of the water remains constant it does not change with the depth that is not a right answer because now we have two equations here one equation we have is sir a is bulk modulus is dp over d rho by rho that is one equation we have and the second equation we have is now that dp by dz dp by dz is equal to rho into g now these two equations we have now he is asking how with the depth the density is changing so let us try to understand it now dp by d rho by rho let us say d rho by rho is equal to dp by k can i put the value of dp from here yes that is now rho g by k rho g by k into dz because dp is nothing but rho into g into dz from here i can put the value of from here i can put dp or let me write it here dp is equal to rho into g into dz this value i can substitute here and i can write this value this particular value i can write it here and this is rho g dz over k okay now what do we get here is this d rho d rho by rho is equal to d rho by rho is equal to rho g by k rho g by k into dz now let let's bring all the terms related to density on one side this becomes rho square is equal to g by k into dz now see this equation carefully left hand side is the now variable in terms of now density and the right hand side is a variable in terms of depth that is z now all we need to do is we need to integrate from 1 to 2 integrate from 1 to 2 k is assumed to be constant then that is constant bulk modulus of water and this is how we are to assume it so what is this rho minus 2 d rho integration is equal to g by k and that depth is z because z2 minus z1 z1 is zero z2 is z so this is how it comes this is minus of rho and this is from 1 to 2 is equal to g by k into z so the moment you solve it what do you get here is first we put 1 by rho 1 minus 1 by rho 2 <coughs> that is uh, equal to further g by k into z that is the equation which we are going to get it g by k into this so what is 1 by rho 1 rho 1 is the density of the water at the bottom right and rho 2 is the density of the water at depth z i want to find out rho 2 how can i find rho 2 1 by rho 1 Minus g by k into z is equal to one by rho two. So let me calculate it then this way. Uh, this is k minus rho one g z over rho one into k is equal to one by rho two. So what I get is rho two is rho one k over K minus 
you know rho 1 g z this is the expression of the density of water <coughs> the density of water at depth z so tell me as the value of z increases the denominator decreases and density increases now this is the expression which you have to plot but what we understand is density is inversely proportional to z that means as the sorry density is directly proportional to z as the value of z increases density also increases so he wants you to give some kind of idea how to plot this particular thing he might ask also ask you i give you this question then next he might also give you this particular thing how the pressure changes with the depth sir pressure increases linearly with the depth let us say from p1 or if i say at particular maybe p atmosphere and then this is p is equal to rho into g into z something like that right so similarly he ask you to plot the density with z so suppose i give you a density now and ask you how it is plotted with z the density of the liquid how it is plotted with z so you have got now this expression you want to calculate now rho 2 this is what we want to calculate rho 1 is a constant term for us rho 1 is a constant term for us that is a constant term so we want to calculate rho 2 so what formula we have is rho is equal to rho not into k rho not into k over k minus something and that something is rho g rho not g into z this is the expression so if i want to plot with z as i keep on increasing z this denominator decreases understand and then this is rho which i am going to plot it so what kind of graph will be plotted that is what you have to see this is the typical question so uh, this entire question this uh, question which i just discussed with you it must have taken 25 half an hour 25 minutes for one uh, scientist to ask you this question and they will ask you very minor things how you are plotting even he will check it i'm not very good in plotting the graphs and all but even he will check your mathematics knowledge how do you plot plot now this particular graph here he will ask you for that also so the moment we read in the books and all okay sir we know this hydrostatic law how the pressure changes with the depth that we know but how the density changes with the depth do we even know that how what is the variation for that and why we assume that it is constant you need to give answer to everything you need to think and then give the answer now this kind of question will never be asked in public sector public sector mein theek hai depth ke sath kaise change hota hai hydrostatic law bata do basic question puchega brc intro is different watch the all such actually asked question series of europedia also watch the mega mock series of europedia also watch the snap of brc and believe me team europedia provides you the best guidance if you want to prepare for brc so just prepare this make your notes and start developing that thinking all the very very, very best for your brc into thank you